Our second session today is about enhancing club quality. One of the greatest things you can do as an area or division director is to help your clubs become better clubs in your area. And it, it's so important. Uh, Dan Rex, when I was the division governor, or the district governor, sorry, told me that it's the most important thing we can do is to have a consistent quality club experience across the board and that no advertising campaign can equal it if we can do that. So George Jurassic was our first district director in 2015 to 2016. He is here to talk to us about how to enhance our club quality. Please help me welcome George Jurassic. Great, thanks Russ. Welcome fellow Toastmasters, honored guest, area and division directors. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking your time to be here. It means a lot to us and it means a lot to your clubs. But before I get started, you know what I'm gonna do. I, for half the people in here know me, Bert, uh, uh, Jay, Grace. Last Saturday, it was a beautiful day. My boss went golfing and he took his friend with me. <laughs> Pat, don't give me the dirty looks. And, <laughs> and they went to the, got up to the fourth hole and his friend says, you know, I bet you can't get that shot in one stroke. In fact, you know what? I'll bet you a thousand dollars you can't do it. Well, my boss thought about it and says, okay, you're on. So he got his driver out, started lining up the, the hole, when all of a sudden a funeral procession drove by. Well, being the man my boss is, he took his hat off his head, put it over his heart, lowered his head, and stayed that way until the funeral procession drove by. When it was gone, he put the hat back on his head, got the putter out, and started lining up the hole. His friend says, wait, 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 wait. I, I am so honored to be your friend. I mean, here we have a $1,000 bet going on, but you stopped to pay homage for a funeral procession going by. I mean, I'm just, I am, I'm just blown away. My boss says, well, it was the least I could do. We were married for 30 years. Oh, darn, I forgot everybody, unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute, unmute yourself, turn off your mute. Bring up your video so I can see everybody, except for Christine, I know she's on the phone. But turn on your videos. Okay. You hear me, George. Okay, good, good. <laughs> good, I wanna hear the laughter, I wanna hear the applause. <laughs> good, good. Okay, before we get started, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say to the neighbor, you are the best leader in our district. You are the best, the best leader, leader in our district. district. You are Turn the to best your best <laughs> <laughs> Turn to your other neighbor and say, every club has its own culture. Every club every has club its own has culture. culture. Exactly, it's great. And it does, that's why when you walk into that club, you have to remember Appreciate that you. that club may not be the same as your club. So go ahead and mute yourself for the moment. I'm gonna keep uh, unmuting and muting yourself throughout this whole presentation. So let me bring up my SharePoint. Can everybody see that? Yes, okay. <laughs> I know you're muted, so you can't see <laughs> I hope you can see it. This starts the training. This is the agenda we're going to follow. I'm going to do an introduction. We're going to go over your role as area director and division director, and then we'll start talking about club qualities. And I have the honor and privilege of sharing this agenda with Sandra Nunez, my good friend. She was my program quality director when I was district director. We've helped each other give a shove to each other all the way through. Now she's region advisor. I'm going to give the first half on talking about club quality. And then Sandra News is going to talk about how to do a club visit. So she's going to be talking about the stuff in the red, prepared to know the club, club visits and resources. The session objectives. We're going to define what is a club quality and what is a positive member experience. And I'm going to be tapping into you guys, so get ready to be uh, unmuting and share your club experiences, because each club is unique, like Rose with Dixon. I, kn I know almost every one of you, and your club is wonderful, and we want to hear from you. Secondly, examine what contributes to a club quality and a positive member experience. 
And then in the second session after the break, Sandra will go over the following, how to do a club visit. But before we get started, you're wondering, George, George, I've just spent an hour listening to Joey about how to be, you know, how to uh, work with a club, the club dynamics, the club officers, but I'm an area director. This, I want to know what I need to do as an area director. True. I agree. So what I want you to do, and Sandra's going to cover more of it as a club visit, is when you go in the club, uh, you've got to ask the club, it's okay if I stop by and visit. You may not be doing the official club visit, you know, doing your report and everything, but just you want to stop by and say, hi, I'm your area director. Just let you know I'm here in case you need any help. I suggest you do <laughs> is you casually walk in the back. I mean, not, <laughs> but in the back of the club meeting in Zoom, just kind of be wallpaper in a Zoom conference and observe, watch, feel the heartbeat. I've uh, processed pro professed this many, many times. Every club has a heartbeat. Every one of you know that <laughs> when you walk in your club, the club, you just feel so good when you walk in the club and you can just feel that heartbeat going on. So I suggest you just walk in there, do your greetings and then sit in the back of the room and observe at least the first club or your first club visit. Giving you an example, and I, Joey and you've talked about a lot of hostile situations. <laughs> and being an area director is not hostile. Don't get me wrong about that. But I knew a friend who was an area director. She uh, went into the club and she says, no, 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 no. You've got to do the Pledge of Allegiance. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You're doing it all wrong. And she told the club how to do it. She would do this on several visits. And finally, she says, your agenda stinks. I don't like your agenda. I'm taking over your agenda. Somebody, yes, Rose, yes, somebody in the back of the room threw a pencil at her. Unfortunately, it hit her on the face. Seriously, it did hit her on the face. Luckily, she didn't get hurt. But she filed a complaint with Toastmasters International. Talk about these situations. Talk about what you just talked about with Joey on find out behind the scenes what's going on. Just to let you know, because it will happen, it will happen to you when you least expect it, clubs will come up to you and say, we're having a sexual harassment situation. How do we deal with this? We're having, somebody's yelling at me, not treating me right. How do I handle this? And in this case, somebody threw a pencil and could have hurt her. How do I deal with this? Toastmasters International has lawyers they have a whole section on this harassment alone. So you're not alone. The club, the Toastmasters International will encourage the club executive officers to see, can you deal with this first? Can you work it out? Well, the uh, area director and that man uh, didn't want anyone to talk to each other, had nothing to do with each other. So Toastmasters International proceeded to go with their steps that they do. In the meantime, that man finally came up to the area director and says, you know, I am sorry. I, it was just a bad day. You just hit me at the wrong moment. It, it just hit me wrong and I apologize. You didn't deserve that. I'm glad you didn't get hurt. The area director says, I take some responsibility too. I was overbearing, trying to control the club of what to do. And I apologize too. Uh, to this day, they're still friends, not great friends, <laughs> but they're friends. Uh, so if you can work it out, sit in the back and observe. So what I'm going to be talking about is area directors, what to do, what is your role? Why are we talking about clubs so much? Well, before you can advise the club, you got to share and remember what your club experiences were like. I'll tell you a little bit about me. <laughs> Everybody knows me by now. <laughs> I have been area 42 governor way back. And when I became Area 42 direct, uh, governor, I had four clubs. And Louise Hula says, you're going to do a great job. You're going to do a great job. And then I formed a new club called the Talkaways. And Rose knows about them. And they joined the area. And then River Talkers Cousters, the uh, Teachers Retirement Association, they moved into West Sacramento. So they joined my area too. So I had six clubs in my area. <laughs> you talk about three clubs, four clubs. I had six clubs, but Louise Ouellette was a, a, just says, George, you can do this. Stay positive. Treat one club president at a time. 
And I did. I took her advice. I would meet with all six club presidents and go over, like Joey says, the contest, training. What do we need to do? And I would have monthly meetings. And I luckily had excellent club presidents. And I worked with them. I saw the dynamics in each of the clubs. So out of that, <clears throat> and you can do this too, uh, I was Area Presence Distinguished. And Louise, thank you, made me a, awarded me Area Governor of the Year. Uh, it's quite an honor. And the only reason I bring this up is you can do this too. You can be Presence Distinguished in your area. Just work with your clubs, work with your club presidents. You can make it happen. Moving on, <laughs> division. <laughs> Somebody says, okay, you did a really good job. I was um, uh, Bledsoe, I forgot Rose, what was his name, Bledsoe? And he said, you want to be division director? And I said, no, 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 I, area director was fun. I had a lot of fun, but no, no, that's, that's enough. I can't go any further than that. And he said, no, you can do it. And I did, I became division D governor, the governors at the time. And I had six areas under me. That was because of a person called Russ Deal. Russ Deal <laughs> said, George, relax. We just did a realignment. We had to throw another area into your division. You can do this, George. So I did. Uh, Russ Deal was always there mentoring me along the way. I had six areas. I went from downtown Sacramento all the way out to Fairfield. Uh, and I had excellent area directors. And I know Rose knows some of these people, Carl Cook, Bernie Quinn, Brian Sassaman, and a person that some of you people may know is Mignon Puller. She's over at National or NSA now, but uh, she did a dynamic job. We were losing clubs, people in the downtown area. Membership was dropping. She took over she held, and luckily all the clubs in her area were in downtown area. So she held an executive meeting every week, starting off meeting with all the club presidents. There. Here's our plan. Here's our six plus plan. Here's the D D DCP program and kept going with the club presidents. If the club president couldn't make it, one of the other club officers had to be there. She required it. By the end of the year, she became select distinguished. I tell you, you can do this. You can do this. You, if you have a lot of encouragement and look at your clubs, have fun with your clubs. Everybody will tell you <laughs> afterwards, not during, but after your area direct, uh, area governor and Christine Garrity just joined us, but she can tell you, Grace can tell you, one of the funnest things we've done in our club experiences is being area director. It is so much fun to work with your clubs. You're not saying that now, I know, but later on you will. And then I was, uh, pre I made presence distinguished with the, all those areas, um, uh, divisions, and then uh, division governor of the year. I was awarded that by um, uh, uh, Russ Steele. Toastmaster year. So I, I was awarded just Toastmaster of the year year. And then as Russ Steele says, I was the first district director. They had a name change. They used to call them district governors. Now they call them district directors. So I am so honored to uh, have been the first district director. I have two DTMs working on my third. My third is almost done. Got one more high performance project to do and I'm almost there. So just saying, if a clown like me, and you know I'm a clown, I'm a professional clown. If I can do this, you can do this. <laughs> you can be distinguished. It's not that, well, it is hard. It's a lot of work, but you can do this. And I know everybody in this room that you've been you've done, done this before and you know what's required, you can be distinguished. So I encourage everybody to do that. So we move right on to club quality. But before I get started, I'm gonna turn off, uh, stop sharing. Oh, I did do that, that's right, I did do that. And I told my joke and we did the right and left. So club quality, I wanna take, take you back to the old days when you first joined a club. As again, many of you know, I was a clown. I am a clown. Been doing it for 30 years. And my wife, that's how I met my wife. She's a clown. But she's a silent clown. She doesn't talk. So I have to do all the talking. Well, believe it or not, clown people are shy. That's why they put the face on <laughs> to hide behind their faces and be a clown. Um, and so I didn't know how to talk. I know it sounds funny, but I knew my script. When we did the routines, I knew how to do my script. But I um, would get me outside of that. I didn't know how to talk to people. So I joined Toastmasters. That's the reason I joined Toastmasters. It was at Rayleigh's. 
supermarketer. They had the club supermarketer has been open for five years. I saw it down the hallway. So finally one day, Jaime Pesos says, George, you're going to come with me to a club visit. I have to bring a club, a friend. Okay. So I joined or I went with him to visit the club. I enjoyed it. I had so much fun at the club meeting. By the end of the club meeting, I had my checkbook out. It says, sign me up. I'm signing up right now. Do it. Unfortunately, Jaime Pesos quit the next month. <laughs> but <laughs> I started it, and it got me out of my shell, my quietness. And so I'm going to ask you guys, and I want you to unmute yourself and tell me, why did you join Toastmasters? Think way back. Of what brought you to Toastmasters? And give, give us some good examples. Starting with Robin. I haven't heard from Robin in a long time. Robin, why did you join Toastmasters? Hey, George and everyone else. I did it when I was working at Kaiser's to improve my leadership skills and to be able to present right on the spot. Good. Great. Great. It sounds good. Grace, I never knew. Why did you join Toastmasters? And you're muted. Here we go. I joined Toastmasters, George, because I wanted to become a fantastic, world-renowned, impressive storyteller. Okay. <laughs> good. And you are. You're very good. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Working on it. Amrik, Amrik, we've known each other for many, many years, but I never heard. Why did you join Toastmasters? I joined Toastmasters because I started with the Bureau of Automotive Repair. I met a gentleman named Marty Gunn. He was a longtime Toastmasters. He recommended that I join Toastmasters to improve my communication and leadership skills. Great. Sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Bert. Bert and I, we've been dealing with each other, forming new clubs. Bert, why the heck did you join Toastmasters? Well, uh, George, I think initially it was because I had occasion to speak in a, a very uh, a variety of uh, contexts. I spoke and gave workshops around the subject of uh, at-risk at youth um, and then a few other things. I also ventured into the wellness area and spoke about things like stress management, wellness, and so forth. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Christine, I'm going to give kudos out to Christine Garrity. Um, I was going to be an area director, but at the last minute, uh, something came up. I could not do it. Christine Garrity stepped up as Area 63 director. So, Christine, why did you join Toastmasters? Hello there, George, and thank you. I joined because I was absolutely incapable of facilitating an effective meeting. My voice shook, my face was red, so my employer had heard about Toastmasters, and I joined at my first meeting. Great. And Theo, I don't know, I don't know you. <laughs> Why did you join Toastmasters? Theo? Okay. Um, a newbie, Sheik. Why did you join Toastmasters? George, I don't think Theo had uh, audio. Okay. That's okay. Oh. No, no problem. Thank you. Russ Steele, you've been here for many, many years, not to say you're old, but why did you join Toastmasters? I, I literally joined because my boss told me it would help me with Q and A's that we had to do for a little sales pitches in our CPA firm. Yes. And then from there, I, I loved it. And, stayed because of w way more reasons I stayed than why I joined. I just joined because someone told me to. Great. Thank you. Linda Bedell, you know I'm going to pick on you. Why did you join Toastmasters? <laughs> I had the experience of presenting in, in front of a large administrative support group every month, about 60 people. I was really horrible and one day the purchasing director tapped me on the shoulder and he said have you ever heard of an organization called toastmasters he said i i really think this could help you and he was correct i mean it was mortifying for me to be talking in front of a large group so 
the organization really helped me a lot. Great, thank you. I have to pick, I have to pick on Ismail because I want to find out, Ismail, why did you join Toastmasters? Well, those who know me, I'm a real estate broker and mortgage broker. But when I came in from New York, I had a very heavy accent and I uh, and no business sense whatsoever. And they had told me, if you're going to plan on doing real estate, you really need some kind of. And that was back in 1989, 90, I want to say. And Toastmasters helped me tremendously in correcting all my, yo, what's up, you know. <laughs> 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 to get me into the business profession that I'm in today. Great. Sounds good. And uh, Ismail brings up a good point. I was going to talk about this later, too, is the co-op culture. We have so many people from all over the world uh, in our club. I work at CalPERS, and it, our club is called the Persuaders. And we have people from India, people from uh, China. We have people from all over. And uh, it, it brings a whole complex of uh, fun and diversity into our club. So it's, it's very cool to have this. And it, you, when you walk into the club, you need to acknowledge that. When you, um, sometimes we forget, why did we join Toastmasters? And as you heard, everybody has their own reason why they joined Toastmasters. And so we bring all those experiences with you when you do a club visit and sit in the back of the room and watch and observe what's going on and see how people are there to overcome their fear of talking in front of people, uh, trying to correct their, their uh, enunciation and English, uh, over a current come, trying to be a good leader as some of the examples that you heard about. Next question, going down the list. What makes your club so special, Rose Cook? Rose Cook is part of the Dixon Club out in Dixon. Rose, why is your club so special? I think we have a terrific club, but mostly because we work together. Now, I will say, even though I think we have a terrific club and we work together and we are so easily, can oh, so and so is not able to come tonight. I can take that role. I can, you know, we will slide into whatever role that we need to accomplish to get the job done. So that really is very helpful in a club. But I got to tell you, we did Moments of Truth last week and I was a little less, I was a little disappointed at how we ended up faring. But then on the same token, I thought, well, there you go. There's our Right. Right. Sounds good. Great. Thanks, Rose. Uh, I'm going to bring up, uh, Rose brought up Moments of Truth. That's another way of finding out club quality. So when you do a club visit, especially with the executive team, encourage the club to do a Moments of Truth. It's downloadable from Toastmasters International. At my club, The Persuaders, we do it about once every six months. And what we do is we do it as a kind of a, like a table topics where we have one person do presenting the Moments of Truth. We have the secretary take down notes and it's kind of a round robin, and there's like seven questions to be asked through Moments of Truth. How's the, when your guest walks in the door, how are they received? How are the members, are you meeting the members' goals? How's our training going on? So it's, it's a inventory of your club. And it's best to take a good inventory of how your club is doing once every six months, even once a year. Uh, I'm going to get to this a little bit later, but we do table topics, actually, uh, first of the year, and we go around the uh, room asking everybody, what are your goals for this year? So that when the executive team meets, they can say, okay, what do we need to do to meet the members' goals? Great. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so who else has an amazing club? We, I have to say, and Jay's going to compliment me, Jay's from my club, The Persuaders. I have to say, we have the best club in the, the galaxy. Yeah, we do. Uh, every first uh, meeting of the month, we have a potluck. And we uh, have a lot of fun with potluck. It's sometimes it's Chinese, sometimes it's Mexican. It'll be a theme every meeting. We announce it to, we have 2,000 people working at CalPERS. And there's no reason why we can't have 20 members in our club out of 2,000 people that we have access to. So we open it up. Anybody can come and have a free lunch and listen to speeches while we're having that. We also have a lot of fun with uh, other activities. We play music. We have, it's just a lot of fun. And then Joey hit it, <laughs> and that's hat day. We, because we're doing Zoom now, so we can't really share food among us each other. But it so happened at one of our meetings, we had somebody wear a hat. 
Well, we're all remoted in uh, at CalPERS from our home. So everybody went to their bedrooms, got their hats out, and we had a hat festival and table topics uh, about hats and uh, talking about, and they were all theme hats, of course, but we had a lot of fun. Okay, Joey, I know you're gonna talk about the speaking machine. What makes the speaking machine so much fun? Sorry, I had to unmute. Speaking machine, oh my gosh. Um, I think it's, I think what makes speaking machine so much fun is that we have developed that culture in our club. We are fun because that's, because we, we, we just, we know that's who we are. It's just like we know that we've been presidents distinguished for 27 out of 32 years in a row, because that's who we are. We make it fun every week. We make sure that we call everybody and we have, we have our list to say, oh, text or email, but if I, we don't get a response on a text or email, we call the person. Right. You don't know, maybe they got something going on in their life. Maybe they're not, maybe their computer's down. We never know what's going on. It's a matter of keeping the members in touch with each other and making it fun and encouraging, encouraging people. I think the speaking machine we've had like, I don't know, seven or eight area directors in the last 10 years out of speaking machine because we encourage people to take leadership roles and we develop those people. Um, and, and we love to have fun. We love to have, we build each other up every meeting. And I think that's what makes the difference for us. We're just a fun club. Right, exactly. And why, <laughs> why pay money to go something where you have to <laughs> talk in front of people if it's not fun? It's just uh, every time when a meeting comes up, like, oh man, I'm just tired. I don't really want to go to the meeting. Talk about your Zoom fatigue. And I almost send an email out and say, I can't make it. I'm just not, you know, not with it. And then I attend the meeting and afterwards, like, you know, darn, I have so much fun. I am glad I attend the meeting. I know Grace is anxious to tell us about her club. I forgot which club you belong to. Tell us about why, what makes your club so special? Well, because I'm in it, George. <laughs> no, my my home club, Easy Speakers, we work out of the Franchise Tax Board, has uh, gone through a lot of growth, especially during this uh, unusual times. And we kind of kind of stick together because once a week we're able to have some normalcy, seeing each other and talking to each other, talking through some things. And although it was a little bumpy in the beginning, and I'm sure most of you can relate to this and getting into the Zoom meetings and stuff, we finally found a plateau now that we're, it's smooth going in our clubs. And we do make it fun. We don't necessarily go through an agenda every single week. Sometimes we deviate from that and shake it up a little bit and have nothing but table topics that day, or maybe we'll have nothing but storytelling that day. And it's been really great. I, I can see a lot of growth in all of us, not only as leaders, but also as Toastmaster friends. Great, thanks, great. thanks, Grace. Yes, I totally agree. I don't know if anybody's visited the Franchise Tax Board in a good way, <laughs> visiting the club meetings, not be have to report there, but it's stressful. They have a very stressful job. It is, uh, uh, I know if anybody has a stressful job, the Franchise Tax Board does, it's very stressful what they do. And so uh, speaking out of turn, but, uh, the club means they have two clubs there at the Franchise Tax Board. And uh, every time I visit them, they have so much fun because it's a stress reliever attending our Toastmasters Club. And then Jay, you know I'm going to pick on you because we have the world's best uh, club in the galaxy, uh, Persuaders. Why do you like the Persuaders so much? Sure, George. Uh, <clears throat> the positive vibe and the fun-loving nature of the meeting, uh, that is two unique characteristics of persuaders. When I joined, uh, I, I grew up in India. I had, a, uh, I had to become familiarized with the environment to be comfortable talking in front of people here. Persuaders helped me a lot. And it was a wonderful experience ever since I joined. And uh, I look forward to meeting every Wednesday and I call it the happy hour of the week. Back to you, 
Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, as George Costanza says, end on a good note. I can't. I, uh, I'm not done yet, Russ. Don't worry. But end that, the subject on a good note. Finally is, why are you still in the club? Why have you quit and moved on to another club, Pat Knight? Why do you love your club so much, your home club? Yeah, my home club is Talker. And before the pandemic, we met at Intel. We are the sister club to a, another club, Folsom Intellects, which is 30, let's see, 35 years old, I believe, or somewhere between 30 and 35. And what I like about my club is there are a lot of up and coming leaders that work for Intel. They're early in their careers. I'm able to provide guidance and help. And maybe I might have a impact on their upward mobility at Intel or wherever else they may go to. And I'm watching people turn into more confident speakers and our next leaders in the district. And that's why I stay. Thank you, George. Great. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Wild Bill has such a cool name. I have to pick on Wild Bill. Wild Bill, <laughs> why are you still with your club? Why haven't you left it yet? Okay, you caught me just as I was turning my video off. I had to turn everything <laughs> back on again. <laughs> I belong to two clubs, and they're the two clubs that I joined. A uh, little history, I joined Toastmasters way back in 2002 in Sacramento and belonged to six clubs. Uh, I moved on from that when I became an assistant speech coach for a high school girls team. I came to the Reno area, we moved here. Uh, my significant other was coming with me to a Toastmasters for the first time. And we had a rule going in that if we went to a club and they didn't laugh at anything other than the joke of the day, that was not a club for us. I be belong to two clubs. My significant other is the president of one of the clubs. Uh, I was the club coach and I'm the VP membership of the other club. She's VP of publicity. And we just had a meeting this Thursday. Just earlier this morning, I was commenting to her, man, this meeting this week was the best we've ever had yet. Everybody showed up in a mood. We were all in the comedy mood. There was definitely, in both clubs, a lot more laughter than just the joke of the day. And we visited 16 clubs chose those two, we went around, and we're back to those same two. Thank you for the question. Great. No, thank you, Wild Bill. Okay, member experience. That's what we've been talking about. Quality club environments lead to membership retention. That's you just heard what Wild Bill said uh, about uh, retaining members. Lauren Carley. What are your greatest obstacles in your club? Thanks, George. What are my greatest opt obstacles in my home club, Speakeasy out of Willows? Well, a lot of it is, uh, un we have a lot of new people in our club, so a lot of it's understanding how Toastmasters works, understanding how the Pathways program, computer program works. I get a lot of questions on what's the right thing to do moving forward, just understanding how the officer roles, uh, responsibilities are. There's uh, because uh, they're relatively new members, there's a steep learning curve just to make the club work at the club level. And how are they adapting to Zoom meetings? That went really well. We have a lot of the, a lot of the new members are professionally motivated. So that's a real strong point. Uh, I think in our, by the third Zoom meeting, we jumped on it right away and by the third Zoom meeting, uh, we had our agenda. We were on it. We we were we were doing great. That Good. was that was a real strong point. 
Good. And how's uh, Pathways doing? Uh, Pathways, Pathways is another story. Uh, I, uh, we have quite a few members that are struggling with it. It's hard to get, my experience is it's hard to get, because I'm the Pathways leader for the club. Um, it's hard to get people motivated. It's hard to get people started on it. Right. They're giving speeches uh, here, there, and everywhere, but they're not uh, giving them on the path. So it's been a real cat herding experience to get people to actually use pathways. Great. And, and, you, and go ahead. You go ahead. And that segments me right into, I was going to say a little bit later, uh, is uh, persuaders. What, what I did is I met, we have 30 people at the time. Oh, I forgot to tell you, persuaders. Uh, five years ago, we were down to six members. I don't know if somebody, some people remembered Ron Barnes, amazing speaker, but he was trying to do all the roles by himself and just got worn out, fatigue. And we, were, we dropped down to six members and Ron told me, he said, George, I, I'm just burned out. I did, I'm just going to quit and close the club up. And I said, no, 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 you can't do that. Give it to me. So I took over as club president and I signed my uh, five uh, members as a uh, uh, club officers and we built that club up year by year and uh, now we're at well we were 30 members strong presidents distinguished 10 of 10 but it took a lot of work with all the club officers back to what i was going to talk about is pathways so what i did was i met with each person because this pathway is a strange uh, i don't know if you've been on the website lately pathways has been remodeled again much user friendly, but it's not yet there yet. It's almost there. But I met with each person. I brought my notebook into the conference room. You can do this with Zoom. And I met 30 minutes with each member of our club and say, okay, you log in. And some people don't even know how to log in to Toastmasters International. And then I say, here's uh, Pathways. Have you done your first speech yet? Yes. How, have you posted it? No, I don't know how. So I showed them how to post their first speech. I showed them how to go on to their next speech because you only have to do four speeches and then you're done with the level. And then I showed them how to complete a level. This is what you do to complete a level. And so I went with each person and they really appreciate that because I was taking my time with them and uh, honoring, respecting what they knew. And then we're in a closed room so they could say anything without being embarrassed that they didn't know how to post something to Pathways. Just throwing some ideas out there for you guys of how we've been successful with Pathways at Persuaders Club. Anybody else would like to talk about uh, the environment when you work, walk into this? How has your Zoom meeting been going? Because now it's a strange environment. And as Joey said, it's going to be around for a while. How is your Zoom meetings going on? Linda, I see the thoughts going in your head. I, I was just going to say that um, some of our members are technophobes and they absolutely refuse to meet on Zoom. And so we've had lower attendance because of that. And I, well, I'm a mentor to one of those people and she is also very, very intimidated by pathways. And I had to walk her through that. And, oh, when we went to Zoom, that was just another huge obstacle for her. <laughs> So uh, I, I don't know how, I mean, some people don't have laptops or whatever. I mean, you can obviously get in and through other means, but they're very intimidated by the technical environment. I agree. And thank you for sharing that. And uh, I was on Facebook yesterday and I noticed one club uh, that they haven't met since March at all. And if you know, <laughs> if you don't meet, you're gonna, your membership's going to drop. Uh, yeah. You may, may even fold the club. So you've got to meet, uh, no matter if it's 12 members or six members, you've got to meet and be consistent. Like us, we meet every Wednesday at noon, uh, no matter what. So people know that, okay, I'll take a break. I'll attend the club meeting, have some fun, like Jade just said. Anybody else want to talk about their George, Zoom meetings? Yes. I have three things I'd like to add over what's been said. Please uh, do. First of all, as far as Zoom meetings are concerned, one of the things I would recommend to consider that has worked real well with us, we've had some wonderful members that moved away. Guess what? With Zoom, they can attend again. 
And so we brought them in and they're a great addition to it. Uh, regarding the thing of pathway, I'm not sure that it's gotten out to everyone, but there's a change in pathways that you don't have to complete one level before you go on to another level. Therefore, you can find a speech to fit anywhere because especially in level three, you have a choice of like 20 different types of speeches. So if they're reluctant, it's like, well, gee, I don't want to be restricted by the pathway. Uh, you don't have to. And uh, regarding Linda's comment of people not having laptops, I know from experience, the libraries in Sacramento and in Reno all have computers that you can get on for an hour at a time. So they can always go to their local library and access that way. Thank you, George. Great, thank you. And, and you're, you're thinking, okay, it's a library, I can't talk. Well, you don't have to talk. Even just attending the meeting is very important and listening. Uh, so uh, good comments, I like it, thank you. George, this is uh, Lauren Carley again. Hey, one, Lauren. Of the th one of the things that uh, at least a couple of our people have done is teamed up where one person doesn't have computer access to Zoom, but they go to the other person's office, home, or what have you. And we've had a number of examples where we have two people on the same device, same screen. And it, it's, um, you, you got to kind of get used to moving the device around, but it helps people to participate when they don't have a connection. Exactly. I mean, during this time, we need to reinvent ourselves. I know we were doing really good, taking on pathways and think, no, no, we're not going to do pathways. And now we are doing pathways. And especially with new uh, people joining, they go right into pathways. Now with this coronavirus, it's Zoom meetings. We're learning how to be Zoom experts. So no, good comment. I like that. And yes, we're reinventing ourselves. So great meetings make club success. I've been wanting to hear from Robin again. Robin, what makes your club a successful club? Robin Dyer. It makes us successful because we we meet every Tuesday at 7 15 a.m. A lot of people don't like to meet that early. <laughs> <laughs> but our our club is always fun. It's we have a total, I believe, of 16, but 10 come strongly. We come strongly every Tuesday morning. And we come to have fun and come to meet everyone. And we work on accomplishing our goals. Great. Sounds good. Thank, thank you. And uh, I saw um, Sandra Nunes quietly slipped in the back door. And she's going to be talking about uh, club visits. But while we're on the track, uh, one thing that makes it so easy for you area directors is Zoom. You don't have to drive to the club meeting or find out, you know, uh, all that. Security, you don't have to worry about security getting to the door and all that. You just zoom right in with your PJs. Well, you may not be PJs, but a cup of coffee and donuts, especially that early in the morning. And you can do club visits on Zoom. So it couldn't be any easier to do it. But uh, I want to uh, leave that to Sandra to talk about. The amazing Sandra, our region advisor, quality club meetings are well-planned, well-attended, organized, and fun. With this Zoom, the coronavirus has put us through a loop, I have to admit. We're still doing, uh, we, we go ahead and toast, we know the Toastmasters for the month. Uh, we also know the speakers for the month, but everything else we're kind of doing on the fly and we, we're working on that as far as persuaders doing. How are your clubs doing? And I haven't seen, uh, Kelly, I need to pick on Kelly Cummings. Are you have agendas in your club or how's your club? well planned out. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, so yes, we have an agenda. It's sent out a month in advance and then uh, the week of, and then it's confirmed. Make sure all the speakers, all the roles are covered. But even with that, there's quite a few people that don't show up. So we do have a challenge with people not letting us know that they can't make it when they've already confirmed. But we do have agendas. It does help things move smoother. Our meetings are going at slightly over an hour, maybe five minutes past, because we're setting up backup bowls. Okay. And it, did you say it's a noontime club or an evening club? It's an evening club, and it's actually a combined club of the four Mary, the four Maryville Yuba City clubs all meet 
And so one of the groups has taken leadership in scheduling out all the car systems that do show up regularly. Great. Doing, you're doing, doing good. I, I am. Uh, I like that. Uh, Ed Johnson, are you still with us? I, he may be taking a break. Nancy Potts. He had to go to another meeting, George. Nancy Potts, are you still with us? He had to go to another meeting as well. Oh, man. Missing my meeting. Give me a break here. <laughs> uh, hey, George. For, yes. George, this is Joey. I had a, just a, a one, one thing to add just real quickly. Please do. When people, because the, the, the Zoom is tough. And we had a member who wasn't, uh, wasn't coming to the Zoom meetings because she had Zoom fatigue. And so I thought, oh my gosh, and I'm the treasurer this year, so I'm in charge of collecting dues in my club, right? So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to lose my member. She's a great member. What am I going to do? So, you know, the emails didn't work. The text didn't work. I called her and we chatted for a while. And she said, I just have Zoom fatigue. I said, you know what? You probably just don't have time to prepare anything. She goes, oh my God, Joey, I don't. She goes, I'm, I'm just deciding whether I, I, I can even be in Toastmasters anymore. And I said, you know what? Instead of thinking of it as a, that you can't do any more meetings, why don't you just come and enjoy the meeting? Don't take a role. Just come and enjoy. There are other people that are doing the roles. Just come and enjoy. She goes, I'm going to do that. And she paid her dues at the same time. So sometimes it's not a matter of the fatigue. It's a matter of the fatigue and I don't have time to do a role. So give them a break. I think that's really cool. Because what is the, what is the, what happens if a member doesn't pay their dues by September 30th, George? Right, exactly. What happens? Right, exactly. Those Masters and International turns them off at Pathways, is that correct? Correct. Or is it not Until correct? The, correct, immediately. It'll be so they're turned off at Pathways immediately. They can't, they can't hang around and decide they're going to do a speech two weeks from now. They can't get into Pathways. October so it's 1st. really important that they pay and get, uh, stay on. Right. And it's good for you guys to know that once they pay, it's almost like the next day they will get reconnected. So that, so what do the members get out of all this? They get their communication improved, their leaderships are, uh, leadership skills are improved. Quality clubs have members that are growing and learning. Uh, uh, and that's why you're paying the $45 every six months, get something out of it. And so that's what you want to encourage your members to do is get something out of it. Member education and leadership, how do clubs attract and retain members? Of course, you guys are, for, are, are seasoned members. I recognize all of you that you're going out with Facebook, going out with your website, uh, going out with a tray of cookies out in your work and say, you know, this is from Toastmasters International. Have a, a cup cookie and join our club. Uh, so there's many, many ways to uh, do uh, track clubs and retain members. The education program, we just talked about pathways and uh, uh, meet their personal goals. Meet with a person, say, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? Uh, do, like I said, the table topics once a year and have a round robin of table topics. Have them all explain, what are my goals? What, what do what I want to accomplish? And the executive team and the area director try to make that happen. Finally, is club leadership. How do the club officers uh, work together to make this happen? Are you having executive meetings? Joey gave an excellent uh, uh, presentation on club officer, how the club officers work and how the area division directors help assist the club officers. And so the resources, you know about District 39 website, of course, but also Toastmasters International has a wealth of information and it's almost, almost everything's free, downloadable. Also, we have downloaded already onto district39.org uh, handouts too. We've uh, we defined club quality, a positive member experience. Examine what contributes to a quality and be a positive member experience. Membership building, we've kind of slightly built on or talked about that. Uh, club education, we talked about uh, pathways. And then how does club officers impact the club? It's so important, as I talked about throwing the pencil. You, you are the clubs and create, you are the person that helps create a positive member experience. You leave a lasting impression. This is your opportunity to make a lasting impression in our district. Oh, where's my badge? Oh, there's my badge. <laughs> when, I hope you all got your badge. I want you to take your badge and, sh and wear it with pride when you do club visits, whether it's Zoom or in person. 
it's, it's a pride that you are the area director. You are our leaders in our district. So I'm going to say, you know what I'm going to do is turn to your neighbor and say, I am the best leader in the district. Oh, you got to unmute yourself. Everybody unmute yourself. Okay, are you ready? I am I, the I, best I, district and the leader. In the leader. In the district. Turn, turn to your other member and say, hey, this instructor is pretty good. Thank you so much for uh, showing and sharing your experiences and uh, you will do an excellent job as area director and as they, uh, Joey says, contact us anytime. We're, we're here to help you. I have to turn this back over. I hate to do this, but I have to turn this back over to our just past district governor, Russ Steele. Thank you, Doug.